You're all right, people. Welcome back to the second part of the two-part series of um, the Session Border Controller. Today, we're going to be looking at SIP trunks. For those of you who haven't checked out my um, part one video, go and check that out. We take a look at installing, patching, and configuring the Avaya Session Border Controller for Enterprise um, for Remote Worker. Um, in this video, we are going to be looking at configuring the SBC for SIP trunks. So what I've got in the lab is I have, let's log into this quickly and I'll show you. I've basically got a little um, Elastix uh, asterisk server that's kind of, um, it's doing the role of the service provider. So that's going to be connecting on the external interface of the session border controller. And then on the inside, we've got that connected to a via session manager. So first things first, what I need to um, point out to you is this video is basically just a, um, it's a rough guide on how to configure the session border controller. And when I say rough guide, basically what I mean is every SIP, um, every SIP trunk to a provider or most of them, they all kind of do their own sort of things. And uh, by that, what it means is that certain things on certain um, providers may be supported for one thing and, and another. So they're never exactly the same. So this is kind of a, a rough guide. And I say rough quote unquote guide on how to configure the session border controller. Um, and what I mean by that is what you can do is if we take a look at the DevConnect website, you know, the DevConnect program, what we can do is we can search for um, different sort of documents. And for example, this document I'm presenting to you here is, um, this is an Avaya application note for configuring the session border controller with uh, Gamma SIP trunk. So for those of you that are outside of the UK, uh, Gamma here is um, a SIP trunk provider. And this application note just tells you how to configure the SBC and the communication manager for that type of SIP trunk that, um, that Gamma offer. So this would have been set up in the Avaya lab and uh, someone would have run through all of these tests and they would have put, um, you know, would have put together this document for, uh, you know, how to configure it. So we're going to do something similar. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the SBC and at the moment we're on the EMS dashboard. So what we want to do is before we do any configuration changes, if this is a live system, what we want to do is we just want to uh, go to backup and restore. And we just want to take a quick, uh, quick snapshot. So I'll put today's date. So you know, via guru and uh, that's the 22nd of November, 2021. And we'll just create that. It just means if any of the configuration changes that we uh, we make on our live SBC, uh, you know, have a detrimental impact to uh, the running of it, then what we can do is we've got a backup. We can always restore it. So first things first, take a backup and uh, download it. It will stay on here anyway, but it's always best to have an offline copy as well, just in case anything happens to this. So it's always good practice. What we want to do first of all is we want to go to our SBC management and we want to go to configuration profiles and we want to head over to server interworking. Now this section is basically what we need to configure. Um, you know, we're allowing certain things to be supported on the SIP trunk um, and we need to create a interworking profile for our service provider side and also for our Avaya side. So I'm going to start off with the Avaya side. What we need to do is just click up here and go to add. And I'm just going to call this Avaya. And what I like to do in here is we enable T38 support. Uncheck the SIPs required thing because it's not required for um, this type of trunk. It's UDP on the outside, so we don't need to have SIPs. This can stay as none for hold support on all of these. It can usually say as uh, as none as well. We'll click on next. We shouldn't need to alter any of these uh, these sorts of timers. Again. If you're unsure, just search the DevConnect website for um, for the document for your service provider. So, for example, uh, Verizon, we could we could find something in there, or Vodafone. There'll be lots of stuff in there. Let's go and try and find the application note for your uh, provider. But yeah, we don't need to put anything in these. 
uh, click on next we don't need to enable that at all and then for this what we need to do record root needs to be set to both sides we need to include endpoint ip for context lookup so we'll just check that box the extensions are going to be a via and then has remote sbc needs to be ticked and this is a new feature that's been added in recently um, i've never had to enable it or disable it before because it's not been there but i'm just going to leave it um you know enabled anyway and then for dtmf support we'll simply click on none and then finish so that's all that's all good and fine we can we can leave that what we need to do now is we'll need to create one for our service provider side so we'll just call this service provider and what we'll do is, is same thing as we did before t38 support sips not required but we'll also do delayed stp handling so we'll need to check that back on next we don't need to fill anything out in there for the service provider side and we don't need to worry about privacy and again both sides for record route make sure this box for include endpoint ip for context lookup is checked extensions are going to be a via and then we'll just select dtmf support um as as none there may be times when we need to change this to rfc 2833 for uh, relay and sip notify or this rfc inbound for like um you know dtmf rtp events but we should be okay with none it means they'll just be received and dealt with as they as they come in click on finish to that and that's done so what we have at the moment is we have our interworking profile for our internal via side and we have one for our service provider side what we need to do now is we need to add our sip server in so this is going to be where we're going to be sending traffic so at the moment i have the remote worker to session manager which was created in the, the first part of this video so what we're going to do now is we're going to add our new one and what i'll do is i'll just call this service provider service provider side is going to be a trunk server and what we're doing here is we'll put in the ip address of um, where we're going to be sending our sip traffic or where we're going to be receiving it from so this is going to be 192.168.196.200 because that's the ip address of my sip server the port is going to be 5060 and the transport for my sip server is going to be udp click on next i'm not using authentication on my trunk it's just going to be a normal ip trunk and then what we can do is we can enable uh, the options ping i'm going to send these every 30 seconds and i'm going to send it from sip at 185.255.255.200 which is my dummy public ip address of b1 so it's going to be leaving my external interface and it's going to be going to sip at 192.168.196.200 which is my sip server that is uh, acting as my service provider once we're happy with that click next we don't need to register with all servers because we're not using authentication on this trunk and then we don't need to enable ping because we're already doing options messages to it anyway and then what we need to do in here is make sure that we don't have this um, enable grooming box checked it's not applicable for udp anyway but we'll just make sure it's unchecked and then because this is our service provider sip server we'll make sure that it gets the service provider into working profile and then we don't need to worry about anything on here there may be times when you need to create a signal manipulation script but um, we can cover that in more detail another time for this moment we don't need to worry about it but there are times where um you know we will need to use a signal manipulation script to be able to rewrite certain parts of the header or remove um, parts from the from field or the the pie header stuff like that it all depends on um the scenario and the type of uh, sip trunk provider so all of those details are usually covered in the application note but for this example we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna click on finish to that and then we need to add one in for a via side as well so i'm just going to call this a via click on next this is going to be call server and then what i'll do is i'll add in the ip address of my session manager my primary one which is 10 to 1.20 port is going to be 5061 and you'll notice as soon as i change this to tls this is going to become um, available to us now so tls and i'm just going to add the other one before i worry about this tls profile so 10 to 1.22 again 5061 and I'm going to use TLS for that as well. Now I already have TLS profiles set up from uh, the previous video, part one. If you're unsure about this, head over there and check it out now. Um, I have a TLS profile, a client profile for my A1, which is this one. Um, so I'm going to use that and click on next. 
I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to send options to session manager because they'll be sent anyway. I'm not using um, registration for it either. I don't need to worry about enabling ping. But what I will do is I'll select the appropriate via into working profile that I created earlier on. And we can simply just click on finish. So we've done our into working profile. We've done our SIP server. The next step is to configure our routing profile. So this one is going to be service provider. I'm trying to keep these names as simple as possible so it's easy to follow. We don't need to change anything in here for this. What we'll do is we'll click on add. We'll put a one in here and then from the drop down, I'll select service provider. And this is the only one I have available to me. So I'm going to click finish to that. And then what I'll do is I'll just create the one for Avaya. Again, same as before, I don't need to change anything in here. But I'll add both my session managers and I'll put a priority and weight of one and two in here. One being my primary session manager and two being my secondary session manager. And I can click um, finish to that. The next thing I'm going to do is we are going to be looking at the topology, the topology hiding um, section on the SPC. So if we go into topology hiding, um, basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to rewrite certain headers in um, in the SIP. So we need one for the service provider. So we'll call it service provider. And the reason why we need this is, is when these come in from uh, the outside world, they'll probably just come from an IP address and that will get sent on as it is. But because session manager requires a SIP domain to be present in there, what we have to do is we have to actually rewrite that. So for this, for the service provider side, unless otherwise specified, what we can do is we can set all of these to IP domain. And then we can leave all of these as auto. So the SBC will work it out itself. So that's the service provider side. We can click finish to that. The next thing we have to do is create one for our Avaya side. And this is where it gets rewritten when it heads into the Avaya. So we'll add all those possible fields. We'll change all of these to IP domain. And then there's three fields that we need to change. That's going to be the to field, or the from field, and we're also going to need to change the request line field as well. And if we head into our um, system manager and we go to domains, what we're going to need to do is rewrite it with one of our domains that we have in here, which this is my one. So I need to just stick this in here. So it overwrites the IP address with this uh, domain name. Then we click OK, we'll click finish. And that is that bit done. The next bit we need to concentrate on is uh, we need to look at our network information. So if we just close these up here so they're not in the way and we go to network and flows, we need to go to network management. Now, this has already been done in part one of the video. So if you're unsure about that, head over to part one and check it out. But what we have here is A1 and B1. A1 is our internal trusted interface that's going to be connecting to our Avaya system. So this will be used to connect to um, session manager. And B1 is the bit that's on the, the, the external side. So you may have just a normal public IP address that will connect uh, straight in on that or you'll be using a private IP address and, and using NAT support. Yeah, as you can see, I have several IP addresses on my A1 interface. This one here I'm using for my remote worker and this one here I'm using for my remote worker as well, plus this one for reverse proxy for my AADS config. As you can see, I'm using a dummy public IP address on B1. And if I go to edit it, what you will most commonly find is you will have a private IP address in here that will be in the DMZ um, and that private IP address will NAT um, to a public IP address that's visible on the internet. If that's the case, so we had 192.168.1.1 in here and it natted to, uh, I don't know, 185.255.253.1, then what we'll do is we'll want to put the, uh, the public IP address in here that it rewrites to. And the reason why we do that is it just updates the IP address in the SDB header. But because I'm using um, dummy public IP addresses on my internal network that don't actually exist, I'm just sticking it straight in here for simplicity and uh, it just makes it easier to follow. So without further ado, what we'll do is we need to 
Now we've got these IP addresses and they're already in place, we need to create our signaling interface. So we need two of these, one for the internal side and two for the untrusted external side. So what I'll do is I'll click on add and I'll call this one service provider external. The IP address I'm going to be using is this 200 address. And what I'm going to do is because we're not using TCP, I'm just going to remove that to disable it because uh, we don't need to have a, um, a port being listened to when uh, it, it's not required. So we'll just, we'll not have it there. And then what we'll do is we'll just click on finish and that's been done there. And then what we'll do is we'll call this A1 trusted internal, or in fact, actually we'll call this a via internal. And then this will be the A1. And I don't need to use either of these ports because what I'm using is TLS. And my TLS profile is going to be this SBC01 A1200. That's the certificate that I created in the previous video for that. So we can click on finish to that. So what we have now is we have our external signaling interface and we also have our internal signaling interface. So traffic will be coming into this. The SBC will process it and then it will go out of this and vice versa when it's sent to session when it's sent from session manager to the SBC it'll be hitting the internal interface and it'll be going out with the service provider external interface on the way to the service provider so let me just drag this over here because we need to have that open again in a minute we need to create a media face interface now so click on media interface and again the same thing as before we'll call this service provider external it's going to be the same IP address that I'm using for my B1 for the signaling. And then we're going to be doing the same thing for a via AVAYA internal. And this is going to be A1. And that's the IP address I'm going to be using. You can um, modify these port ranges, but for default, um, I don't need to change them. We can just leave them as they are. But if it is required to expand them or change them to something else, it's just. You know, I put in the start range here and where the range is going to end here and click on finish. So we have our signaling interfaces, our media interfaces, our topology hiding, our SIP servers, our routing profile, and we now have our um, interworking profile as well. So what we need to do is we need to create um, something called uh, session flows or server flows. And they can be done in here under network and flows, endpoint flows, server flows. As you'll see, I have one in here for my remote worker already. What we need to do is we need to create two, one for traffic going out of the SBC towards the service provider and one for traffic coming into the SBC from the service provider into session manager. So what we'll do is we'll click on add and we'll just call this uh, call server. So this is going to be, um, well, in fact, we'll start with the trunk server one actually. This is going to be trunk server and what we're going to do is this is going to be for the external side. So this we're going to change to service provider and then this is going to be a via internal and then this is going to be service provider external the routing profile i'm going to be using is going to be a via and then the topology hiding profile i'm going to be using is going to be service provider click on finish to that and then what we're going to do is we're going to add our one in for our call server which is the via internal side so this one here will be a via this one here will be service provider external and then this one will be a via internal and so will this one here for our media signaling interfaces and then our topology hiding profile is going to be a via and our routing profile will be service provider so we can click on finish to that and that is what we have here so on the sbc side this should now already be set up and in fact what we can do is we can test this so from my SIP, SIP client here, what we can do is we can dial this number and what we should have is uh, we should see an invite and it should, if we click on this now, here's the invite. It doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot. I just cancelled it. So let's just have a look at the incidents on the SBC. So yeah, this one here, no server flow match for outgoing messages. So what I need to do is just double double check these very quickly. So the call server, let's have a look. Call server needs to be external signaling, internal, internal, yep. The routing profile is service provider, topology hiding profile is a via. 
And then let me just check this to make sure I haven't made any mistakes in that one. That is trunk server. So that's service provider. Fire internal is correct. And then service provider external, external. The routing profile is via topology hiding profile service provider. So really there shouldn't be any reason for that not to work. Let's go back to my trace SBC and we'll just check it again and make sure we can see what's happening. So the options are coming in and they're not being responded to request timeout. Let's clear that off again and just make sure that we So the options come in. Let's try that again. Let me have a look at my routing profile and what have we done here. So that's TLS, service provider, that's UDP, that's fine. Let me just check the SIP servers to make sure they're okay. Service provider, yep, UDP. 192.168.196.200. Again, that is absolutely fine. It's a bit strange why that isn't working. What have we got for our signal interfaces? Let me just check. EDP port, like 5.2.5.200. Yep, that's cool. 192.168.197.200. Again, that is absolutely fine as well. So that shouldn't be a problem. And the endpoint flows. Again, they're all okay. So, what have we got here? That looks fine to me. Let's clear that off. And just try that again. It's like my SIP server isn't even uh, isn't even sending anything to my. Uh, SBC. I have seen sometimes before that um, these sometimes do need to have the application restarted when you make certain changes to them. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. I don't know why that is, but sometimes it, it does happen. They do need to be restarted. So this just won't take a moment. So that's now restarted. We will probably it'll probably take like a, a minute or two just for it to sort itself out. We can try and put another call in. So hopefully, maybe this will do something. All circuits are busy now. Please try to call again later. All circuits are busy now. It's not even hitting it. Let's have a look at the incident, see what we get. So we haven't had anything for a while. Service hobby is up. Yep, we know that. Hopefully we'll see something in a minute. What we can do is uh, from the dashboard, it will give us a list of events here. They're saying that there was no subscriber flow match, but I know that's untrue because, well, they're definitely there. So here we go. So that was all it was, is I need to restart my SBC. So what we're seeing here, and we'll just refresh this, is 
we can see the call coming into the SBC and we're getting this proxy authentication required. Now, the reason why we get that is because it's coming back from Session Manager. Now, if we look at the whole scheme of things, what we have is the SBC connecting to our service provider and we are sending traffic to the session manager, but the session manager doesn't know what to do with it. And the reason why it doesn't know what to do with it is one, it doesn't have um, a SIP entity for the SBC to uh, match where the traffic comes from. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll add that now. So what we need to do is go to SIP entities and we'll click on new. And then what we'll do is we'll just call this SBC I1. Um, this is going to be SIP trunk. So we need to change that. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to put the IP address in here of the A1 interface, which is this one here. So if we go back to, let's get rid of that. If we go back to, where is it? Under network management. Well, actually the better way to show you this would be signaling interface. We need to add this IP address in to here, which we have already. We'll set the location for it. I'm going to set my time zone as well to Europe, London. And then what we'll do is we'll add in our two links to session manager one and session manager two. It's going to be TLS. And what we can do is we can go ahead and commit that. So that's been committed. If we go to our session manager dashboard, <clears throat> we'll see is this entity is not monitored at the moment because it hasn't been, hasn't been put in there. But what we might be able to do is, I don't know why I put 001, but anyway, we can just ignore that. If we go back to our SBC now and we try and make that call again what we should see is uh, something a little bit better so I bring that over here so we're now getting one step further and the reason why I say no route available is because I don't actually have any route available for um, the number to come in so the numbers coming into session manager and what it's doing is is it's looking at this dial plan so if we have a look at the dial pattern it's looking at the dial pan and it doesn't see an entry for the number I'm dialing. So this 0205-1231-888, it doesn't exist. It doesn't know what to do with it. It comes into the session manager and it's like, I don't have any information to where to send that number. So I'm not going to be sending it anywhere. So that's fair enough, right? It doesn't have anywhere to be told where to go. So it can't be told where to go. So what we'll do is we'll need to add that we need to add that in basically so what we can do is we'll go new in fact before we do that we need to add a, a routing policy so this is going to be no we don't need to add a routing policy there's already one in there for cm calls but it's going to be using this routing policy here so this is for the number incoming so what we'll do is the number that's incoming is this one here this 02051231 uh, 1888 minimum of 11 maximum of 11 and what we're going to do is we're going to say well this is going to go to um, communication manager so it's going to be hitting the trunk that I have set up here for communication manager we'll commit that and then what we can do from here is we'll just clear this off again and if we make the call now then what we'll see is we're getting a little bit of a more a different message it's saying we're getting the 404 not found and the reason why we're getting 404 not found is if we move these about a bit move that over here and just clear this off if i do a list trunk you'll see the sm call trunk is on trunk two so if i do a list trace trunk access code uh, hash 102 for that trunk here and then i make the call what you'll see is the call is actually coming straight in from the SIP trunk into the SBC, into Session Manager. It's matching the dial pattern that we put here and it's sending it off to CM. So what we need to do now is we're a little bit further on down the chain. We need to um, basically tell CM where to route the call. So it's coming into trunk two. What we need to do is uh, change incoming call handling trunk and then trunk two and what i'm going to say is if the number is 11 digits and the number is 02051231888 i want to delete 11 digits i want to insert 2001 
2001 be in this station here. So we can do that. F3 to that. Then if we go over here, there we go. That is ringing. I should be able to answer it. Hello. Hello. One, two, one, two. One, two. One, two. This, this is the test. test. So there we, we have, have it. it. We have two-way two audio. audio. So that's good. We can do that. However, that is only the incoming part. If I was to dial 902051238855, it doesn't do anything. And the reason why it doesn't do anything is because, and if we do a list trace tac hash 102, and I try and make that call again. So 902051238855. It's hit my session manager. My session manager is like, I don't know, there's no route available for it. I don't have a route for it. So what we need to do is we need to create a route for it. So we could just do zero and we could say, well, if it's 11 digits and it's 11 digits, then send it out to the SBC, but we don't have a routing policy for that. So what we need to do is we need to create a routing policy for our SBC. So this will just be called to um, PSTN. We can put in our notes um, via SBC 01 to service provider. And we could select the SIP entity destination as SBC 01. And we can click on commit and then we can add our dial pattern in. So we could say, well, actually anything 0205, uh, 1231855. So it's a very specific route as well. We could say if it originates from everywhere, then send it to PSTM. Click on commit. What should happen now is if I bring this little guy over here and we start this trace up. And I go to my 1x communicator and I do 902. I don't know why I did that. 902051238855. Why are you not doing anything? 9. 02051238855. I don't know why it's doing that. Should be uh, taking it in. Let me have a look. Do our list trace station. List trace station 2001. 02051238855. So what does it have in here then? So it's using that. Root pattern 2. It goes to session manager. It could be that... Um, yeah, session manager is probably still getting com configuration from system manager. 404 not found, no route available. As you can see, it's not even hitting the SBC at this moment in time. So it's probably still uh, applying that those um, those rules to what I've just added in. But we'll try it again. 02051238855. I still need to wait for it. Let me just check my replication to make sure that. It's completely synchronized. Um, let's have a look. Session managers. When did they get synchronized? About a minute ago. So it's probably still applying its configuration. Let's have a look at these trunks. Um, yep, they are all up. That's fine. So that's all good. Let's try this again. 02054138855. Perhaps I made a typo in my dial pattern. Oh, that's why. Look how stupid of me. Typo. So 0 2 5 one 2 3 one 8 5 5 So that is why it didn't work. It just goes to show, guys, it's really important that you uh, make a note of what you're doing. Otherwise, you'll uh, end up making a mistake like I just did. Anyway. It's good what a uh, bit of fault finding can do. So if we go over here now and we go over here and we go to logs, 
Um, we dial this now. Sorry, from here. 902051238855. And we're probably still waiting for it to. Uh, 02051231855, yeah. It's probably still doing something. I mean, it's not even hitting the SBC, so let me just make sure I've got that sent to the right place. So the different one, 18855, yep, to PSTN SBC01. Fire all, 0205, 123, 1855. That should be fine. Oh, hang on a second. It's not 1855. It's 8855. There we go. Right, let's try this the final time then. 902051238855. There we go. We can answer that. Hello? Hello. Hello. And, and we have two-way two audio. audio. So that's, oh, that's pretty, pretty cool, cool that, that is. is. So that is how to set up a SIP drunk on the session border controller. Apologies for my uh, typos there at the end of the video. So it's been a long day. But yeah, so if you have any questions or um, anything that you want to check out, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below in the comments box. Please make sure that you smash that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, there's going to be loads more videos coming up. Um, but yeah, for now, I think that's all. So you guys stay safe out there. And as always, I'll see you in another video. Cheers, guys.